when we go to choose one of the refrigerants, and in the videos to come, I'll break down each one and the pros and cons. But right now, I just want to focus on how you introduce and work with any of the replacement refrigerants. All of them, even 410A, say liquid charging must be introduced as a liquid refrigerant. The reason for that is the refrigerants are not unique blends in that when you mix these two or three substances together, they don't form a whole unique substance. So they have a tendency to want to separate. So if you open this up and you vapor charge, the portion of the blend with the highest vapor pressure is going to come out of the jug first. When we invert the jug or turn it upside down, we can charge it in as a liquid. So most of the refrigerants are about the same amount of refrigerant that you took out. There are some exceptions and we'll talk about each one of those when we talk about each one of the different refrigerants. But you want to go to your data plate on the back of the units. And on this particular unit it says we have 5 pounds, 5 ounces. So 5 times 16 is 80 ounces plus the 5. So we have 85 ounces of refrigerant. And you want to start your charge there. When you go to introduce your refrigerant into the system, you want to do it through the high side of the system while the system is off. It is not operating, it is not running. Then you want to invert your cylinder, turn it upside down. Connect your yellow charging hose to the refrigerant. And then we're going to hook up our liquid line and the suction line. We'll hook them both up, but we're only going to operate off of the suction, the liquid line. So what I want to do now is when I turn this jug upside down, I have it sitting on a scale. And it's going to tell me the total gross weight of the box, the can, the cylinder, and all the gas that's in it. I can tar or tear this to zero. I hit the zero button, it shows me all zeros on my scale. Now, as I open my liquid gauge up, it starts dumping the liquid refrigerant. And now I can look at my scale and it's going to tell me how many ounces I'm taking out of this jug. So when I get to about 90%, and I'm going to go to about 80 ounces. So I've got to my 80 ounces, I shut it off, and give that refrigerant that I put in there some time to equalize out in the line. Once I've waited two or three minutes, I'm going to energize the system. When I energize the system, I may, depending on the length of line set, how far it is, how big they are, I may have to top off the charge. So at that point, I need to be able to do this while it's operating so that I can get the correct superheat. After I turn this on, I want you to let it run for five to ten minutes so that all the temperatures and pressures equal out in the system and we can start getting the true readings that we need. So at that point now I'm going to find out that I'm a little low on refrigerant. Working with most of these, 421A, M099, uh, 407C is about pound for pound of what you took out. So if I took out 85 ounces, I'm going to put 85 ounces back in. So I need to top it off though, so I start the unit back up and I need to check the superheat. We all take the suction pressure, convert it to temperature, it's all right there on your gauge, and then you take the actual line temperature of the suction line to get the manufacturer's recommendation for superheat depending on the temperature inside and depending on the temperature outside. If I have an excessive superheat and it's determined I need to add more refrigerant, I'm going to do it through the suction side. But we've all been taught that introducing liquid refrigerant into the suction side while the compressor is operating could and can damage the system. So we need to have some sort of device, and in this case we have what is known as an insta charger attached to our gauge. It's a little bitty bullet type device and all it is is a small piston metering hole. It's like a metering device. So now we attach that to the gauges. Reattach our suction line. So now when I crack the suction line open, yes, liquid refrigerant is coming into my charging hose, going through the manifold, but as soon as it hits that piston, it's changing back from a liquid to a vapor so that I don't send liquid refrigerant to the compressor and not have the fear of causing damage.